This project is going to use a piece of aluminum bar stock I got from a local metal shop to improve the adjustability and rigidity of the carriage or saddle on this mini lathe. It measures roughly an inch and a half wide and a half of an inch thick. I picked aluminum because I felt it would be easy enough to work with since I don't have a mill and still be strong enough for what I need. The first step is to mark out the dimensions of the existing clamps and cut those pieces out of the aluminum. The new pieces won't actually clamp the ways in the same way, but will need to be the same size, if not a little bit wider. A quick sand smooths out all the rough edges. And here are the new blanks. Next is to drill the mounting holes. I ordered a set of transfer punches, but they didn't come in yet, so I just used the drill bit. Next is to mark out the second component of the new system. I only need a U-shaped piece so all the extra material in the middle will need to be removed. I decided to keep the mating surfaces of the two pieces the original edges of the bar stock so they mount as securely as possible together. But without getting thinner bar stock, this was still a compromise either way. Drilling some holes in the corners made it slightly easier to get the rest of the material out later on. I found that an angle grinder and a file was the quickest and easiest method of removing the extra material. I had also intended on using two of these, but it took so long to make one that I decided to try it with just the one first. Maybe after I get a mill, I will remake these a little bit more precisely and make one for each side.
Marking and drilling the mounting holes was done in the same way. Here is the semi-completed assembly for the back side of the carriage. My transfer punches finally came in, so I was able to utilize them when marking the holes to drill for the front side piece. Since I only made one of the U-shaped pieces, I'm going to use the old clamp as a spacer. The drive gear to move the carriage interferes with the placement of this piece, so a portion had to be removed to allow clearance. Putting it together for a test fit reveals that a little more needs to be taken off. The point of contact was clearly visible and after a little bit of filing, it moved smoothly up and down the ways. Next is measuring for some more holes that need to be drilled. I ended up drilling a couple of them a bit too close to the edge for comfort, but they should still work fine. They were later all tapped and lightly countersunk. A little hand sanding was done to give all the pieces a uniform brushed finish.
The final result is all the components needed ready for assembly. I had to get larger screws due to the increase of the thickness of the material. These ball bearings are the old headset bearings from the motorcycle project I'm currently working on. And finally, a set of M6 and M8 set screws that I got from a generic kit. It's worth noting that only the diameter is referenced on the kit, so a thread checker was needed to be sure to tap the holes correctly. The way this works is the set screws will go into the threaded holes and the ball bearings will sit on top of them. Once everything is assembled, the height of the bearings can be finely adjusted via the set screws. I made the side-to-side -side adjustment holes large enough to put the bearing in from the back so it was easier to assemble. Once everything is mounted on the ways, it just needs some adjusting and testing to make sure the tension is correct and can move smoothly yet remain rigid. After a test fit, everything was taken back apart and Loctite was added. Some grease was also added to lubricate the bearings. After reassembly and adjusting, the dial gauge shows that the carriage only has less, less than half a millimeter of movement on the back side when I press on the front side. This is an amazing improvement over how it was before, especially since it shouldn't be, need to be readjusted now that it's been set. And it still moves very smoothly.
This video also includes a bonus mini project. I recently got a vinyl cutter and to test it out I decided to upgrade the label I put on the control box motor plug from the teardown video. Thanks for watching and remember I try to include as many relevant links of the things that I use throughout each video in the description and I hope you enjoyed this and please like and subscribe. Thanks.